Welcome, NASCAR Camping World Truck Series qualifying from Mid Ohio Sports Car Course, Lexington, Ohio, about 60 miles north of Columbus. And uh, you can see it right there on your screen. It's raining. This makes it a little more interesting when we put the rain tires on. And yeah, we will do that because this is a road course. Of course, you don't do it on the ovals, but we will run in the rain and had a little bit of precipitation in practice earlier in an hour session. As you see, Mason Phillippe with a little bit of an issue. Grant Infinger had a problem as well, a transmission. You can hear it. Never a good sign, Phil Parsons, when this is what you get. Down the long back straight in here, grab third gear, but listen when he grabs second. Nothing happened. Something broke. It was actually the output shaft and the transmission that broke. They said that very unusual for that to happen, but that will put him to changing the transmission. Chandler Smith doing a little bit of uh, yard work as well. Got it spun around going the right direction. No significant damage. Stuart Friesen off course as well. Everybody just trying to find the limits in this morning practice and, session. And guys, this is when it was dry. It was a little damp early, but this is when it was a dry. Pretty hard contact. Really the only truck we saw get into the wall. That's Stephen Malazzi, and I uh, like this right here. Yep. Okay. Right, everything's good. Don't sweat it. Yeah, we're not. <laughs> but uh, we're getting a little bit wet because we need the, we got to have the rain gear. So bring out the umbrella and the ponchos, and you see there is certainly precipitation in the area, and it just fired up. We had an ARCA practice uh, just prior to coming on the air here, and they had some precipitation, just a little bit, but it has really started to come down now. But uh, as you see, 73 degrees, and I'd say it's a little harder than a light rain. And we'll welcome our pit reporters downstairs in the elements, uh, beginning with Jamie Howe. Well, Vince, as soon as this rain started falling, I was standing in the pit with Justin Marks waiting for us to go on air. And Kosen Hosevar, his teammate for the weekend, came over and said, what do I need to know about racing here in the wet? So they've been debriefing for the last couple of minutes, Justin. I loved one of the headlines this week. It said, you can't take the driver out of the team owner. It's your first NASCAR national event start since 2018. What are you hoping to gain from this weekend? Well, I think it's about having fun. I think it's about, you know, thanking these Nice guys and, and Worldwide Express and everybody that supports it, you know, for giving me the opportunity. So it's been a, it's been been a while and I only got about five laps in practice so so I've got a lot of uh, I got a lot of work to do on me um, and then this session will be kind of a throwaway with the rain because we're gonna have a dry race so I'll just go out there and try to have some fun and and um, you know it's if anything it's nice to be able to talk to Ross Chastain and Daniel Suarez as a driver because just to know what they're up against and kind of what they're feeling and it's, it's good to get in the car and feel that for myself when Carson came over here for that debrief, there are a couple of things I overheard you say. Stay off of the paint. Uh, the, the line, obviously, it's different with the, with the wet racetrack. What other tips did you give him about this session? I think, ra I think racing in the rain is, is, or driving in the rain is, is a philosophy more than it is any kind of particular nuance about a, a particular track. It's just about understanding where grip is when it gets wet, understanding some of the things that you have to do to make sure that you're eliminating some risk, but you're also finding speed. So I was just talking to him a little bit about that, just that you know things are a lot different when the track is wet. You find speed in a lot of different ways you have to be smart you know it's like I've, I've, I've won races in the rain before just running like 90 percent you know what I mean just because <clears throat> that line is so fine so anything I can do to help him he's an amazing talent uh you know and it you know, will help the team and um I mean he's not the first one I've talked to this weekend so it's nice to come to the racetrack and be somebody that people are seeking advice from it's great to have you out here it's Justin Marks uh in for his first race since 2018 let's go down to Josh for more stories Yet another good guy to get advice from is Matty D. And for you, what changes when it comes to qualifying now that we got the wet stuff coming down? I was just saying a little bit ago, I was like, man, the weather can't decide what it wants to do. And then right after I said it, boom, rain. So it decided. So we're qualifying in the rain. It's fun. I like I like the rain stuff. It's actually fun in the, the truck. So, um, yeah, we'll see. Should be interesting. And if, uh, if anybody is in this kind of weather and you need a good uh, roofing company, I know of a company. You have to see them on my truck every week, Rackley Roofing. <laughs> see, what an organic plug that was, huh, Josh? <laughs> you got to make the sponsors happy as always. But I talked to you uh, about a month ago, and you guys were already talking about this race and how this was probably your best shot to win. Why did you guys circle Mid-Ohio? Yeah, I think we've we've been working on this road course truck. It's a little more updated now, and we've got a pretty good piece. 
road course racing falls into my strong suit of something I like to do. Um, it's technical, and I think kind of that experience can come into play and, and help. And I can also lean on guys I know like uh, A.J. Allmendinger, who's kind of okay at these things too. But no, I've had a lot of success at road courses. I love them. Um, and, and we've, you know, our team, Rackley, uh, the whole Rackley War team has put a lot of effort into this uh, into this truck, truck to try and give us a good piece. Um, it's a standalone race too, so it's us, just us truck guys racing against each other and hopefully us getting a win so we can put it in the playoffs. There you go. That's the plan for Matty D. Good luck, guys. Well, and it is a critical race in regards to making the playoffs. If you're Matt Benedetto, you see 62 points off the cut line with just two races remaining in the regular season. Uh, he really has to win, and this is certainly his best opportunity to do it. And it's kind of tight there around the cut line. Grant Infinger, 39 points to the good. Crafton, 29. Maybe a little nervous there. Derek Krause still within shot. I think Derek Krause is probably the only guy below the cut line that might be able to point his way in. I think from Tyler Anchorman down, they're going to have to win. 50 points down. There's only 120 points available in these two races overall so those guys from a 12th on down are going to have to win yeah and finger lost 19 points last race so i mean that would really tighten things up if crafton would happen to lose 19 or more you know, with still another race to go yeah the windshield wipers on we're gonna qualify in the rain at mid-ohio It's the new champ after her dramatic cash in on Ronda Rousey. How will Rousey respond? Plus the return of the undisputed WWE no, no. Universal well. Champion Roman Reigns. It's an all-new edition of Friday Night SmackDown. Live at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, tonight on Fox. Back at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. Yes, that is rain. And it is coming down here for NASCAR Camping World Truck Series qualifying. We did have a practice session earlier today, and there was some precipitation in that as well. Not nearly as hard as it's raining now. And you see our top 10 led by our playoff standings leader, Zane Smith, three-time winner this season. Connor Mozak, we'll talk more about him there. 10th fastest, uh, bright young talent. He's going to get his shot making his Truck Series debut here today uh, with qualifying and uh, then, of course, with the race tomorrow. I'm Vince Welch along with Phil Parsons and Andy Lally is in the booth with us and Andy has uh, multiple wins here at Mid-Ohio and IMSA. How does the rain and switching to the wet tires, uh, the wets as we call them, how does that impact what we're about to see here in qualifying? Well, the, not only just the rain tires, but Mid-Ohio in, genu in, gen in general is probably one of the trickiest, lowest grip dry lines in the wet that there is so it's a very textbook rain line you want to be very very wide and like way off the dry line here you'll see even in the dry on a cloudy day you'll almost see a reflection from how polished the dry line is here so uh to elaborate a little bit more about what justin marks was talking about he had an amazing run here in 2016 when they won the xfinity race but uh and, and he was like you said he was one of the guys that didn't make a lot of mistakes in the race put the car in the right spot had faith in the in the way you drive in the rain, which is uh, a bit tricky, especially in conditions like this when we get guys off straight away. Well, Chandler Smith, you see in there in the 18, it didn't take long for uh, him to get off course. And you see the clock in the upper left-hand portion of the screen. The, the field is separated into true group, two groups. We'll have group A and group B. Each group gets 15 minutes to post fast times. And the top five from each group will then advance to the final round and they will run for the pole as you see you know, what happened to Chandler Smith here. Now Andy, was he was he a little bit too close to the line, that polished line you were talking about? He was a little bit too close to the line. He was sort of breaking on his way in, but he also carried a whole lot of speed for, for an outlap. And I think it was just a little bit of an, an ambitious go at it. And uh, I mean, we're seeing a lot of guys just realizing how treacherous this place is on the line. Everyone that's turning in on the sealer and on and hitting the pavement here coming into seven is going to step that back at. Uh, this is a place where it's also in those situations really easy to, to lock the fronts up. So in something like this where you don't have the grip, that means not a lot of weight goes forward on those tires either. So typically what you're going to want to do is take your brake bias and turn it backwards here. Uh, and just get a little bit more rear because you're not going to, the fronts aren't going to be able to take that much brake pressure. I think this has to be a record for the number of trucks that have spawned in one lap here. 
that 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 were not involved in the same accident. <laughs> Chase Purdy can't figure out which way he wants, which direction he's going to go. But uh, yeah, it, especially if you have no experience driving on a wet course, uh, this is certainly an incredible challenge. As you see, John Hunter Nemechek around as well. Wow. We've got some on board from the 23 to see this. Grant and Finger on board here with Grant. Nice 360. Yeah. Well, well executed. Smooth. Yeah, All good. Stick it in first. Get back, get back to it. At, at, at least the second, if not the third spin for Chandler Smith. And and, and we we joke, but Andy, you know, on this how hard this is with these guys. Now we just came off the. You know, they practiced this morning. It was a little damp. You know when they started, but then it dried out. So these guys are used to a, a, rel a dry racetrack, and then they put up under these conditions. And, and the other thing that almost every driver is going to do is they're going to draw from their past memories of driving in the rain. One of their last times driving in the wet was at Coda, which is a lot more grip, and a, and a, and you'll you'll almost run the the dry line in some of those areas there where you'll switch back. We saw the race last year uh, between uh, uh, Gilliland and, and Grala that they were both switching up lines. You've got one line here and it better not be the dry line because <laughs> you were going to be slipping and sliding just like these guys are. They're going to learn this. They're going to figure out even on the straightaways, it's hard to be putting power down in third, fourth gear if you're on the dry line. A lot of these guys with manufacturer support will have been in the simulator and everything they learned in the simul simulator they're just going to throw that out <laughs> i think that's has he made a lap yet okay that's i think that's the, our last count four spins and now he was just coming around back to the start and, and we can kind of see why he's right on the dry line right there um we've got to, and so I'll try to talk through this if we, if we stay with the 18 here. As we come into turn one, he wants to be off that dry line and way, way, way outside here. And then pause on throttle as he's going back across the dry line and then find his way up the middle of the straightaway or at least one car width off the dry line here. And that's what a lot of these guys are struggling with. Coda, you could drive on the dry line and have it be okay. Here, it's absolutely treacherous. It will be seconds slower on your lap time. And most likely, as we're seeing, we're getting guys spinning around and either sticking in a gravel trap, filling up a grill with grass, or just quitting all the cover and rolling Timmy back. Hill, a smart late. guy right here, going back to pit road. Well, I think it's if you're watching at home, you say, why don't they just slow down and complete a lap, get a lap? You know, look at how hard Chandler Smith is driving this truck right here. Why don't they just slow down and complete a lap? But you've got to find the edge. The tricky thing about this, the weather forecast for tomorrow, completely dry. Yeah. So you're dealing with something here today for qualifying that you're not going to have to deal with in the race tomorrow and finding a balance of what you want to get accomplished in this practice in this qualifying session what is it so, so the number one goal of what they want to get accomplished is start up front because this is a tr relatively tricky place to pass in 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 comparison to other tracks that we go to I, I, i'm seeing the 18 here this sort of, and it's not a dig, it's actually, it's a, it's a compliment. This sort of reminds me of Bubba Wallace in 2016. He was out there in the six, and he must have thrown it off five or six times in the race, but he drove the heck out of that thing. I, he passed me five or six times, and he would throw it off five or six times. And I would watch, and it, he was able to gather it up while it was in the grass and, and keep going, but was really solid and went really fast by the end of that session. 13 turns, about two and a quarter miles around, and I think Chandler Smith has spun in every one of them, Jay. Amy, uh, every one of the 13 so far. Well, I've been listening in on his team radio, and there's been a, a lot of um, differing information given to him. And you think about what these drivers are dealing with out there, but then they're also being told, you're going too fast, you need to slow down, you're on the line, you need to get off the line. Right now, the word to Chandler is, you got to do it just like that. You need to follow that the offline around the racetrack and minimal wheel movements. They're telling him he's putting too much input into the truck, not letting it go around itself. So a lot of coaching happening, a lot of trying to figure it out. Only uh, just shy of nine minutes left in this session, but they're getting a lot of information being fed to him right now. Well, John Hunter Nemechek, you see the time there, a minute 59. So basically two minutes. Now in practice today, they were going around here in 87 seconds. So you, you see the difference in how much slower they have to go maneuvering under these conditions and believe me this is this is harder than what they were doing when they were running 87 second laps
And, and I tell you, for all those spins and whatnot I see, we, we see with, with Chandler, watch him by the end of this session. He's, he's got a shot once he gathers it all up and learns from those mistakes to put a big lap in and go, go quick. We can see Crafton here again. We're getting that wheel spin going from second to third gear on, on the upshifts. Uh, Parker is going to move all the way to the outside here and run that rim as, as brave as you can get to run inches from that white line, which means if you're a mile an hour too quick and you slide the front, now that front's in the grass, but that's where the grip is. It's, it's, it's almost like the... It's, it's, it's the berm on a dirt track. It's where all the oil that's coming off the tires and the polish isn't. It's where the aggregate is at its sharpest and sticking out above the water. That's where the tires grip the road. Remember, the top five from this session will advance to the final round. And we've got a second group, Group B, coming as well for a 15-minute session. So far, John Hunter Nemechek and Parker Kligerman lead the way. Back at Mid-Ohio, NASCAR Camping World Truck Series qualifying. This is Group A, Vince Welch, along with Phil Parsons and Andy Lally as we're watching Grant Infinger try to maneuver this 13-turn course in wet conditions. We've been, we've been watching him during the break, Vince, and Andy was talking about where he doesn't need to be, and it looks like he was exactly what you just said, Andy. you got to stay away from the red and white curve. I was going to say, and, and look like Grant was doing a better job <laughs> until that happened. Now, there's a tricky part about every rain line here. You're going to cross the dry line once on entry and once on exit. So you've got to make sure you're on that line for the least amount of time. What we saw was the 23 there. As it, as it came through 8 and 9, it was on its approach, and he, he got on the brakes on the dry line. And as soon as he got on the brakes, those rears just shut down and sent him around. So he's on the dry line here. He goes to brakes on the dry still, still on a little bit of paint, and the back just the back's just not happening. You've got to be at least a car width to the right as we come through there. He did a good job through four, five, six. Was very patient, and then got back to the dry line here, and it, it just wasn't happening. It's it's a tough deal. We've got more footage here from the 18. On the dry line on entry, and same thing. We, we've got to get these guys. Uh, Andy, explain what you mean by the dry line, because the, the entire course is wet. So right. How okay. Do you, Sorry. What do you mean by the dry so, line? So to, to explain this in detail, every truck, once we go dry here tomorrow when we see the race, and what we saw in practice is there's a specific line, just like you would see on, on a short track, like if you're at Martinsville or something, nobody's really going to move their lines around too much. Everybody's up against the wall, and then they turn in down to the bottom, and then they're up against the wall at the exit. That same thing is happening outside, on entry, inside at the apex, outside again at the exit. And we can see here So on the, the dry monitor, line, you mean the dry line is what they would run if the course was dry? Yes. That's a, a decent attempt on the telestrator there, but what we can just look at is the sealer that's that's over here, and we can watch that mark. That sealer's down because that's where most cars run, and that's where it tears up the asphalt, and, and those concrete patches are where the wear happens, where the high G load happens, but that's also where the most amount of polish and the most amount of rubber gets put down, and so you want to basically get on the brakes to slow the car down a car width at least, off of that, and when I say off of that, if it's if it's a right-hand turn, you're going to and and the trucks are normally set up all the way on the left. You're going to be five, six, seven feet to the right, almost breaking down the middle. And then you've got to be very gentle and sort of come off the brake as you roll as you roll across the line that those trucks have been driving on all day, and you find the cushion on the outside, and you literally go from big slip and monster pushing the car in the truck to sliding across that, and then finding a ton of grip hooking it up on the outside, getting some power, some rotation, and starting to pick that speed up. And then you've got to be aware again on the exit as you're just at the point where your brain's like, man, we're good. I'm going to add some more power. You cross back over the dry line, and you've got to be aware there. Pause on the throttle and then finish it off when you get back. Essentially, you see the red and white curb on the inside of the racetrack. Andy, in a dry line, you're going to be very close, if not on top of that, is it, with your no, no, with your right side's tires. Well, so, uh, if you're... If on you're, a dry line. On the dry line, yes. yes. On the wet line, if you're anywhere near the red and white curbs, you're doing it wrong. You've got to be far off of it. We saw Parker Kligerman come in here. He broke about a car width 
uh, off almost to the middle. Basically, like his right sides were on the middle seam that we're seeing on the track, and then he basically went straight through the lighter gray part that we're seeing, which is part of the sealer, and then he found that outside. And the the brevity that comes with that, the sketchiness, the 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 insane feeling in your stomach as you're sliding through that and having the faith that there's grip on the other side is tough because if you miss and you hit that paint, you hit that grass, now you're in the gravel trap. Well, you're in the, the wall. Uh, you're in whatever damage you have, and your race is potentially over. The pickup truck uh, was uh, unable to pull Chandler Smith out, so they had to get the tow truck out, and you see the clock stopped at 3 minutes and 50 seconds. Uh, group A, which is the group that you're looking at here, gets 15 minutes, and then Group B will get 15 minutes. The top five from each advance to the final round and an opportunity to run for the pole. And as you see the yellow line there indicating our current top five, Connor Mozak, interesting story, 23 years old. As, uh, he really didn't even start racing till he was 18, grew up kind of a stick and ball kid and uh, got turned on to it by one of the, the driving experiences at Charlotte Motor Speedway and said, man, that was a lot of fun. And he's turned into a pretty good racer. A lot of folks think very highly of Connor Mozak, don't they, Andy? Uh, for having such little time in a car you know he, he's he's only got four or five years in total in a car he's he's made big impressions both uh in his first xfinity start uh last month at at portland uh with with very good speed top 10 qualifying speed uh his ta2 experience and, and he's just he's got a good head on his shoulders we talked to him this afternoon i liked his approach about what he wanted to do with his arca schedule where he was aiming at understanding that there are more and more road courses coming on the scene and he thought ta2 would be a great spot to kind of hone those skills and and i think um he's either got really good management and family behind him that that's helping him make these decisions or he's got a real good solid head on his shoulder or, or both and uh but he seems pretty cool calm and collected and, and he's got his his brain pointed in the right direction to get the right stuff going and you see uh this is the 29th road course race first time ever here for the trucks at mid-ohio how and, about the last 17 yeah, races Vince? 17 different winners on the road courses only three of those guys are here this weekend yeah good chance we might uh, see number 18 in a row boris said ron fellows chase elliott austin cindrick all got their first career win at a road course race, and uh, possible that that could happen again here this weekend. I, I think it's a bit unfortunate that uh, because this is the first time here, and this is only the third road course race of the season, so many of these drivers, the one thing you need when they come to the road course is laps. Uh, they had some at practice earlier today, and qualifying, you know, you really wanted an opportunity to come out here and get good laps to prepare for the race tomorrow. This is completely opposite of what they're going to deal with tomorrow. So this does them no good, really, in preparation for the race tomorrow because the forecast is nothing but dry for tomorrow. Yeah, it really doesn't. And everything they learned in that practice session or in the simulators has nothing to do with what they're doing now. It's almost like it's a different racetrack just put right here in the same spot in Lexington, Ohio. But uh, And the thing that if, if it keeps raining, if the conditions stay the same, then it'll be even from first group to the second group. If the track got a whole lot better, then all the second group's going to run way faster than the first group. Trucks just getting back up to speed at least as much speed as you can gather in this uh, rainy condition. And there's the alternate start-finish line. That's the line used uh, for timing and scoring during qualifying allows them to cross that line and then duck into the pits afterwards a uh, lap is completed looking to be in the top five here in this group and that will advance you to the final round and an opportunity to run for the pole and so far Kligerman, hosts of our Nemechek Crafton and Connor Mozak looking to make his truck series debut in the top five how impressive is Hosovar? we saw him get the pole at Sears Point back a few weeks ago and then cr actually crashed just as he crossed that alternate timing line but here he comes in the rain at mid ohio someplace he's never been before and he's up here in the top five parker kligerman fastest so far impressive again jamie 
There are a couple of changes that are happening down on pit lane, but one of the biggest ones is during that first session of qualifying, Parker was struggling with the windshield fogging up, so the team ran back during this break to grab some dish soap out of their hauler. They put it onto a rag, rubbed it onto the inside, and hopefully that's going to keep the fog from rebuilding as he goes out there for the second attempt to set that top, the top 10 for the race tomorrow. But uh, that's the biggest change that's happened down here, Vince. Every little trick, you learn those things over the course of time. And We know Andy ran the Xfinity race. There's a little bit of grass there from 88. And this is how it got there. Just overcooked it. He's gonna go, he's gonna, he, at least he drove straight through the gravel trap, which kept that truck going, and you see the grass on it. But Andy ran the race at Portland, which was essentially run in the rain. And I know Andy, I was listening to Andy on the radio at times. He, he said the vision was the hardest part. It wasn't the grip on the racetrack. It was the vision. When these guys are out here and they're trying to find a hole in qualifying and they're all by themselves, it's one thing. When you are in the pack and they are throwing up all that rooster tail and whatnot, you can have the clearest windshield in the paddock, but you're still not going to see very far out, out, out past the front of those hook pins there. Connor Mozak has been bumped from the top five by Dylan Lupton and he is on a lap here trying to get back into the top five we'll keep an eye on that to see if he can finish uh, this qualifying Whoa. session by nope not gonna happen as he gets off track just trying to push it a little bit to try to sneak into that top five not going to work out for him and another one off track in the gravel and that's the 40 of Dean Thompson I would qualifying like session Group A is complete. That's I would like to have a count on how many spins and off-track excursions we had during this qualifying session. And there's the seven of Dylan Lupton, who is looking to make his season debut. Of course, has run many truck series races in the past, but none this season. Driving for Spire Motorsports. And been very impressed with what Lupton has done throughout the course of his career when given the opportunity and I think uh, got to be pr impressed with coming out here in these wet conditions and sticking his truck in the top five of this first group. I was going to say I was very impressed with what he's done in his last lap. He just went from a 203 outside of the top five to, to stick it uh, a two minute almost uh, two minute point nine here and, and put himself uh, solidly in the second round if he can keep this. That's a big, big improvement. So under that yellow, under that break, he either had a good conversation or good thinking and, and, and readjusted some stuff and went out and took seconds off of his lap time. Now they just want to bring it into the pits now and get ready for this second group. Group B will come out, and again, out of that group, the top five will advance to the final round. And you can see there a good shot of how much it's raining and how hard the rain is coming down under these conditions. And Vince, we know how hard it is. We've seen... 20 plus ex off track excursion excursions, but we've got 13 corners here. There's 13 opportunities to run off this racetrack. Heck, I think you run off in the straight. <laughs> I mean, we've seen the straight line is a hard several one to straightaways. Drive. Exactly. Yeah. Good job, though, by Dylan Lupton. You know, if if you can uh, just get a good starting position for tomorrow. I mean, track position is so important here, right? I mean, it's hard to pass. I and mean, track position is important always, but especially at a place like uh, Mid-Ohio. If you can manage in these <laughs> wet conditions to get good starting position, this really uh, even works more to your benefit tomorrow. Yeah, it's raining, and uh, that just adds to the fun, right? Yeah, it's raining. It's slippery up on top of that motorhome. Grab a beer and get on up there. That's a smart thing to do. Have a good old time. Yeah. Glad you're with us. And it is qualifying for the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. And Group A has just completed its 15-minute adventure. And you see Parker Kligerman, Carson Hosevar, Nemechek, Crafton, and Lupton advancing to the final round. How about Trey Burke in his first ever Truck Series race making the top 10 in that group? Pretty impressive. Yeah, we've got uh, five drivers going to make their Truck Series debut tomorrow, and Mosack, one of those, is, as is Trey Burke, as Phil mentioned. Let's go downstairs to Josh. Down here with Carson Hosevar, second on the board in Group A. Nice enough to hold the umbrella for me, surprisingly. And you have the crutches, you have the umbrella. I should be holding it for you, but what was it like out there? Uh, really fun. I mean, it's a lot of fun. Um, 
just having to be so technical and so much like you feel terrible you feel like the slowest thing on earth like you're a four banger out there on a local saturday night dirt track when they just tried to mad mud pack it like you are spinning the tires left and right um and you're actually fast compared to the other guys that are spinning a little bit more than you but um no it's a lot of fun hopefully it doesn't lightning or anything and we get to round Route two, just fine, and I think there's a little bit more speed, but when you have a little bit more speed, most of the time there's that risk versus reward, and I got 99% uh, sticker from after Sonoma that I'm going to look at from now on, but, but yeah, like you said, like I, I, I should be holding the umbrella, but you're a little short, so like you started hitting me in the head with it, so. Wow, okay. Well, how do you stand with the foot right now, especially with everything you have to do out there? Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know if I had a nickel or a dollar or whatever you want to count it, for how many times I've gotten asked that since that, I could fund my whole truck season and probably at then then some. Uh, but no, it feels fine. It's getting better. It's getting a lot better, a lot more movement in it. Um, I just can't walk on it yet. I mean, that's the biggest thing. Um, you know, these crutches aren't just for show, even though I'll joke about it and say they are. And um, But no, I, I can walk on it a little bit, put a little bit of pressure, but I've been using it so much they'd rather me not and just try to be a little easy when I can. Um, it just hurts after a while, like just because the bone and all the muscles and everything. Finally, got to get used to holding my tall, uh, whatever you want to call itself. But um, you know, hopefully, I don't tip over or anything when I get my foot back together. But a lot of fun right here. All right, brother. Well, good luck in the second round, Jamie. Well, Josh, for Grant Enfinger, he was outside of the top five in the Group A of qualifying, so that puts him without a top ten starting position for the race tomorrow. We're expecting very different conditions, but what will this do for your chances tomorrow? Uh, yeah, obviously, uh, track position is important everywhere we go, uh, especially at the road courses where we don't have any uh, pit stop strategy. Um, so, you know, I think we have a really good champion power equipment um, Chevrolet for, for the dry weather. You know, I don't, uh, I don't know. I think the driver let us down a little bit there in the, that qualifying session. Uh, felt like I, I thought I put a, the last lap together pretty decent. Got held up uh, by a buddy of mine out there, and, and that was my fault. I should have let him go to, to begin with. Uh, we thought we were going to be able to make a second lap and just obviously ran out of time. So, um, unfortunate, but uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be ready for him tomorrow. Thank you, Grant. Vince? Thanks, Jamie. Hey, there's a look at the uh, 41, Justin Marks, back in a uh, truck. Good to see him. He's made, uh, what, 38 starts, I believe, throughout the course of his NASCAR career in a truck. And he won here at Mid-Ohio in the Xfinity Series back in 2016. But in his current role as NASCAR Cup Series co-owner at Trackhouse, Justin Marks, good to see him back behind the wheel. Speaking of that win in 2016 here at Mid-Ohio, well, you should be comfortable and familiar with the conditions, right? Well, very similar to what they are today, but what a great job he did that day. Andy alluded to it earlier. Yeah, it was an absolutely amazing run. The, the conditions were horrible, and he was on point. Not only was he quick, but he was super precise with where he placed his, truck, his car, and now he's got to do the same thing again with his truck. He's got a handful, though. I, I, I'm watching him in practice. He was huge loose. As soon as he touched the throttle, the back end was stepping out in practice, and, and we're seeing this on his outlap, same exact thing. Now watch him place it right to the outside here. This is the gutsy part here where you're running way off of that inside curving, and now you cut it down, and you, boy, he's even let, he's doing the same thing. He's got this habit where he lets his right hand off the wheel when it gets loose, and he'll correct just with his left hand. Um, you can tell that's something that he's not going to be happy with. He's going to be looking to make changes, dry or wet, He's got to be able to go to throttle without that thing stepping the back end so far out. A lot of road course racing experience for Justin Marks uh, in sports cars. Nine wins, uh, part of uh, nine winning teams in the sports car history. So, I mean, he was quite the racer before he became more well-known as co-owner of Trackhouse. And, and that's, that's a really important thing to have is we see him step out his fourth gear he's getting he's stepping the back out now just before he goes to break there just try to get just a little bit ounce more throttle in the thing in the back end stepped out you'd think these drivers would be flat on the straightaway and and for the most part they they get to be but there's going to be these little points where there's an undulation a tiny turn and man you've got to be on top of it you can hear just I mean, just as we watch and listen around here how little throttle there is through five, six, seven, and eight here. 
Jacksonville. We had a little bit of a complaint by uh, somebody's text to me during the commercial break uh -oh. about you, Andy. <laughs> it, it was from Michael McDowell, and he said, please tell Andy to stop telling people how to drive in the wet. He said, you, you're giving away our advantage. <laughs> I, I, I do get hired for coaching here, so I probably shouldn't be giving it out to a million people watching on the on the broadcast here. So, yeah, I, I'll, I'll stick to the basics from now on. Sorry, Michael. Derek Krause in the sand. We saw Chandler Smith get stuck in the sand earlier. Uh, that gravel. China Beach, they call it. And it's no picnic, that's for sure. Once you get in it, Austin Wayne South around. Wallace hey, Allen was it as yeah. well, Vince. Hey, congratulations to Austin and his wife Jennifer, by the way, uh, in this over the course of the last month. He's taken the last three races off, but uh, they had a daughter. And uh, congratulations to them. Certainly a life-changing Occurrence, and I know they're thrilled to death to uh, welcome Zeppelin into their life. And with a truck off course and in the sand or in the pea gravel, if you will, there's wow. the red flag coming out. Tyler Ankrum off track. You saw Colby Howard as well. This is really no different than what we saw in that first group, uh, Group A. You know, when they first went out, we saw trucks everywhere, and that's certainly the case again with this group getting adjusted and acclimated to the conditions. This is an overestimation of grip. It's that simple. They, these guys have run at other tracks, most likely in the wet, and again, they they see this coming here. I mean, even Justin, who's won here in the wet, he's take he, he he's sliding that thing all over the place. Nobody's really having a good time here as uh, as they're all battling handling issues trying to make this thing work. And we mentioned earlier his 38 truck series starts and of course got some Xfinity series experience as well. We mentioned his win here at Mid-Ohio and his uh, sports car accomplishments as well, including that Rolex 24 class victory. I was his teammate there. Were you? Were you? Yeah. How about that? I, what what a feel good story though I think for 2022 with uh, with a job that Trackhouse Racing owned by Justin Marks has done three wins already both their drivers Ross Chastain with two wins Daniel Suarez with a win what an amazing job that they've done in a very short period of time unbelievable I shot Justin a text about a month ago after after Suarez won uh, and I said now technically race to race car to corner you've got more wins per entry than any next-gen owner for, for this, this season, more than Rick Hendrick, more than any of the big names. I think in your your second real year, first time with two cars, you are way overachieving, as he's done with almost everything else he's ever done in his life. Currently first on the speed chart here in Group B. I think that's where we see some of that experience paying off as uh, we're still under red flag conditions we're almost five minutes into this session benson really justin marks is essentially the only one with a lap time zane smith has a lap time but it's nine seconds slower than justin so he wasn't even up to speed so it's going to get really busy here when they open the track back up you know justin was smart he was the first one out of the pits and, and so your mentality there is if you're the first one going out you you think it's either going to be carnage filled or it's going to get more wet that the, that the track is going to keep, uh, you know, it's, it's going to stop, you know, the grass is going to stop soaking up water, and it's going to start coming across the track, or it's going to start raining harder, one or the other. But uh, he was able to get out, and, and if everybody's wondering at home why it's like that, um, he was just the first one to get uh, out there, get his first lap in. Uh, we've got Josh down in pit lane. Yeah, that's right. I'm down here with John Hunter Nemechek, and let me know what the conditions are like out there as we see a lot of people battling, but you were still able to put up speed in that first group. Yeah, I thought our truck was pretty good. Um, I really enjoy rain racing. I don't know what it is about it, but it's a lot of fun. Being able to move offline, try and find grip. Um, I, I did a 360 actually off turn two and kept going, so that was pretty cool. Um, but just having fun with it. Rain racing here is very hard. I feel like Mid-Ohio is one of the hardest places, as a lot of people say, when you come and race in the rain. Um, both the inside groove and the outside groove, I believe, are polished uh, from what I've heard. And the inside groove is definitely slick, uh, as it is everywhere 
in the rain. So just having fun with it. Mobile One Toyota Tundra TRD Pro was fast right from the get-go when we unloaded today. Um, having some extra laps in the ARCA car is helping uh, for sure. And now running in the rain, hopefully that helps for the ARCA race later this evening. But um, I don't know if we're going to get around two or not. Hopefully we do and try and go set it on the pole. Thanks and good luck, John Hunter. Jamie? Matt Crafton was fourth in that first qualifying group, and I was just watching as your team was scooping gravel and sweeping out from underneath. What are the biggest challenges out there aside from just the rain falling? Um, biggest thing here is we've never been here. I ran, what, I like five laps at full speed today and trying to figure out even where the dry line is. Now that they throw the wet, you got to try to find the wet line. Um, I love this. I mean, I, I wish we got to race tomorrow in the rain. It's so much fun, and you can't put down the throttle. You have to squeeze the throttle down. But all in all, I'm very, very excited about the, the moves. We got Bud back here on the pit box for the next two races. We've had a lot of history together, so uh, hopefully we have a good show tomorrow on our Toyota Defender. You've always been pretty vocal about going to racetracks and have character that, that force you into driving them. The experience comes into play. How much does experience come into play here at Mid-Ohio? I've never been here. I have watched an, I watched an IndyCar race here. That was it. And um, ran it on the simulator last two weeks, and that's it. So uh, the rain, I, I'm, I have no idea on that stuff. So I was just shooting in the dark. <laughs> I knew we had to make top five right there to make it to the final round. So throw my butt off and see what we got for this next round. Thank you, Matt. Matt mentioned Bud Hafley. He's the new crew chief for the 88 and uh, former former crew chief and currently uh, has the shop foreman role at Thor Sport. But uh, a crew chief change with the 88. Jeff Hensley has moved back over to GMS and is the crew chief for Grant Infinger. They worked together for four years in that driver crew chief combination. And now uh, Crafton works with Bud Hafley, longtime friends, been around one another, worked together for a long time. How do you see that move? and the significance of it at this point in the season. Well, I was talking to Jeff Hensley this morning, and he said it just wasn't clicking. He said, I know Matt's a great race car driver, and I feel like that, you know, that I know what I'm doing, but for whatever reason, we just couldn't get on the same page. So he said, I think it's going to be a win-win. Obviously, I have a great relationship with Grant Infinger. We've had some success together. I know Matt can do it. I know Bud Hafley can do it. So Jeff Hensley said, hey, certainly no hard feelings. It's just a just an opportunity I had to go back home, basically, to North Carolina and work with somebody that I've worked with and had success with in, in Grand Infinger. Well, Thor Sport in Sandusky, Ohio, and quite honestly, it's tough to get people to move to Sandusky, Ohio, to work for Thor Sport. And, and it's a great organization, and I think those that uh, go there really come to love it and love that organization. But if you've lived your whole life in North Carolina, moving to Sandusky, Ohio is a, is a big move. It's about an hour from where we are in mid-Ohio. And, uh, but it's still, it's, it's challenging. And Thor Sport finds, uh, I think, finds some gratification in the success that they've had through the years with Duke and Rhonda Thorson leading the way by the fact that they are in a remote location uh, in relation to the rest of the NASCAR community. Yeah, I've been up there and talked to Duke at the shop, and I know how proud he is of his organization and all the people in it. And uh, and it's amazing what they've what they've been able to accomplish. But Matt Crafton with three championships on his own, as we see Derek Krause going around for the second time in this session. Derek Krause, by the way, uh, Charles Denike, who was the crew chief on the 23, where Hensley has gone. That Ike has now moved over to the 19 uh, with Derek Krause, and Krause is just outside the bubble in the playoff picture as you see qualifying continue, approaching the final five minutes in Group B. So top of the screen, you see the fastest in Group A, and then our five quickest in Group B, separated by the yellow line there. Kaz Grala currently on the bubble of the top five. We had a lot of movement in a week, Vince. I mean, we only had one week off, didn't we? We had eight crew chief changes or eight crew chiefs on new trucks this week, <laughs> including the trucks of playoff contenders in Finger, Crafton, and Krause. Wow, amazing. We just saw the 25 at the Benedetto uh, move to the top of the charts. Obviously, not everybody's up to speed yet because if we can look at our fast five across the top of the screen here, see that they're down into the 58s, uh, all of them under 201 where we don't have a uh, we don't have a single truck doing that yet 99 going for a little more off-roading some of our uh, road course 
fans that might not be NASCAR fans may be tuning in and watching this and wondering why are these trucks? We got a side by side of Kaz and Justin here. End of the back straight anyway. This is coming into turn four. Tricky situation. They both want that outside. <laughs> Justin, it's a little more than a slide job. Yeah. It's a door job. Don't really want to do a whole lot of racing in this little qualifying session. You want to force your clear lap, though. There's three more corners, and you get to start again, and either Justin's on a good one here, or obviously he wants to get clear and have a clear windshield for the beginning of that next lap. Jack Wood, another one of those with an issue. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is tear your truck up today in these conditions and then uh, have to deal with that tomorrow, even though the conditions obviously tomorrow are going to be expected to be a lot better, but still you don't want to have to repair and go to the back of the field. Vince, I think if I'm a crew chief, I'm going to tell my driver, go out there, get me as fast as lap as you can without taking enough any chances of tearing that truck up. And that's the lovely thing that I've seen about this racetrack. We saw that one truck get into the wall in practice earlier today. But all these spins, we've probably had 40 spins during this qualifying session with both groups. And I don't think anybody has got into the outside barrier. And I think that's amazing. Here's Corey Heim in the 51. Of course, a part-timer on the schedule. But, uh, boy, I tell you what, he has been impressive as he jumps up into the number two position in this qualifying session. He has won two of his seven starts this season. He does have some experience here. He ran the Arca Menards race here last year, actually sat on the pole and was contending for the win with Ty Gibbs and ended up jumping a restart and uh, got penalized, and that relegated him to a seventh-place finish. He's on a good line, and you can see the truck turns in really good. If you watch that entry uh, viewpoint that we've got from turn one, when he comes under the bridge, he turns that truck, and you see that nose point, but he's using up his outside edges big time here. He's patient on his throttle. We're not seeing him uh, jump the rear end off the, all over the place, but look how daring he gets in wide coming through corners. That you, he's nowhere near those apexes. Just running that outside, looking for that grip, trying to put that power down, and that's a good-looking truck right there. I think he was watching our first qualifying session and was listening to Andy, <laughs> like Michael McDowell was talking about, because he's getting it done here, second quickest so far. So is Justin, just bettered his time for the third lap in a row here, finally down to a 2 minute point five one. Back down to Jamie on the 51 of Heim. And just as you're talking about how hooked up he looks out there, we talk about that truck a little bit. That's the Kyle Busch. It's chassis number 71. It's the chassis that John Hunter Nemechek drove to a second-place finish in Watkins Glen to round out the 2021 season. It's also the truck that Kyle Busch drove to a third-place finish at Coda and to the win at Sonoma. And Marty Lindley, his crew chief for the weekend, Corey's crew chief, was the crew chief for uh, Kyle Busch when he did win at Sonoma. So there's a lot of good things going on with that team's road racing program right now. And Corey's says it's a privilege to be able to be in the truck and just be a part of it. Yeah, yeah, Jamie, not just the road racing program of that, of course, Kyle Busch Motorsports strong, obviously, but the, that 51 and what Marty Lindley has done has been impressive with three wins this season. That's Chris Wright. That was going into turn number one, the 44 truck. Got it going. Got it. Did a nice job getting, not getting stuck. Now he gets back on the racetrack and heading into turn number two. Not not, not great as well. Well, there are 13 turns, so he's got 11 more to go. <laughs> he does. He does. And he's doing double duty, so he can do it again here in our Menard Series race. He had a couple things going on there. That was Thank quite the a great adventure. And uh, also probably too much rear bias there. You saw as, as you know, he came in with a lot of speed, but as soon as he got the brakes, we could read the sponsor uh, on the side of the truck, and, and that's obviously no good. That's usually too much rear brake, and uh, it's usually going to end up in a trip to the ground. Final 30 seconds now, and uh, Zane Smith outside the top five, so unless he can finish here in these final seconds by jumping back into the top five, you're going to have the defending or the uh, playoff standings leader with a little deeper starting position, as you see Chris Wright. There is the damage that you talked about, Phil. Guys avoiding, unfortunately, Chris Wright unable to avoid it as he's gotten into that inside wall. Here is Andy just coming off the last corner, just trying to put the power down. And He was a little bit on the dry line from the apex out, and it looked like he was trying to turn the truck down to get it onto the good stuff and just got a little bit aggressive 
with the power there, and obviously, you break those rear wheels loose, it's going to just keep coming around. As that was happening, the fastest time of our qualifying session for both sessions combined was set with Hyman, that 51, that truck is quick and is now half a second faster than anybody in any of the sessions. And looks good, too. Looks good doing it. So it here's Zane Smith trying to get into the top five. This The clock has expired, and he has uh, just crossed uh, the finish line, so he did not get into uh, the top five before time of has expired and time of Jeske working on it as well. One of the hottest guys we have here. You see him right now being shown in the 11th spot and again after the Colby Howard gets turned around again in the 91 he's gonna try to keep it rolling we're gonna lock in the top five from each session and they will go for the pole in a little bit but then everyone else is just gonna be ranked by by their lap time so just because Christian Eckes is 10th that doesn't mean he's gonna necessarily be 20th after they combine the lap times we saw Majeski there take off two seconds. He got two seconds better on that last lap, but uh, still obviously struggling a little bit with that truck uh, to get that speed out. This is the last truck here. It's Kaz Gralla, who is potentially uh, in a position to jump up into the top five. He is the only one that's still on a hot lap here that began before the time expired in this Group B session. That's a relative term, hot lap. Yes. yes. And he crosses the line right there and is not able to jump up into the top five. So it'll be Heim, Benedetto, Ankrum, Marks, and Taylor Gray uh, advancing to the final round out of Group B. And I don't know that there's any big surprises in that group, other maybe than the fact that Taylor Gray is in there and Zane Smith is not. Smith first and second in the two road courses earlier this season. Final round of qualifying coming up. Yeah, it's really coming down in mid-Ohio. This is, in fact, the hardest it's rained all day. There's been some precipitation throughout the course of the afternoon, but uh, nothing quite like this. And we... Have gotten through Group A, and now Group B is complete. And you see those in yellow advancing to the final round for a shot to capture the pole. Zane Smith just misses. Nice qualifying effort from Austin Wayne Self, Ben Rhodes, Kaz Grala, Christian Eckes filling out the top ten. But good effort there from uh, Justin Marks, Taylor Gray. Well done. A couple of guys that we don't get to see very often. Let's go downstairs to Josh. He's with Zane Smith. Yeah, Zane Smith just outside in that final group in terms of qualifying. What was it like out there battling the rain that's just coming down harder and harder as the time goes on? Uh, slick. Um, I don't know. I felt like we were decent in the beginning. And I struggled just getting a clean clean track there at the end. I think when it started getting faster, um, but I don't know, unfortunate just because our metrics uh, would have had us on pole and there's rumors going around the garage of we weren't going to qualify if it was going to rain uh, because everyone was locked in or something. So um, sucks that uh, I don't know where I'll start now, 11th, 12th or something, but um, the place that's super hard to pass, but we'll do our best. I know in the dry we have a, uh, a really fast food barn forward, so uh, we'll give it our all and uh, hopefully maintain this points lead. And you've been really good on road courses, uh, a win and a second place finish this season. What is it about road courses that suits your style? Yeah, I mean, I enjoy uh, road course racing, preferably in the dry. Um, I I grew up racing carts uh, when I was a kid and all around the country, and so I just really enjoy it. There's a big version of that, so um, I don't know. I don't want to call it like an off weekend, but it's it's definitely – a little bit more fun when you go road racing. Thanks and good luck, Zane. Certainly impressive. He won at Coda, finished second at Sonoma, and that's helped him gain the uh, regular season points advantage. The last three races, the points lead has changed hands. So Zane Smith trying to hold on to that through the final couple of races of the regular season. And remember that 15 bonus points. Uh, is the prize for winning the regular season championship and those bonus points are huge Just trying to get you to the championship you race. carry him with you all the way to the championship race to, to, to be one of the top four 
two race, the last two races, we had these top four separated by only 14 points. And so you can see the big difference for Zane now is 21 points all the way to second. Setting the lineup for tomorrow's race at Mid-Ohio for the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. Rain continues to fall at Mid-Ohio and qualifying has been canceled after these first two rounds. So we did have all drivers get a lap post a time. Group A had its 15 minutes. Group B had its 15 minutes. But uh, the final group will not roll. And NASCAR has determined that the conditions are just too treacherous at this point and uh, no sense damaging vehicles when we're expecting to race under dry conditions tomorrow. So uh, the top time from the two groups, well, it belongs to Corey Heim and the 51 team of Cobbush Motorsports. So Heim will earn a pole position, and that is his second career pole and just his 11th start. And there you kind of get an indication of how hard it is raining, and it's you know, really the, the pace of the rain <laughs> has increased as uh, this qualifying session began from where we started oh, a little more than an hour ago. So it'll be Corey Hyman and Parker Kligerman on the front row when we go racing tomorrow. And it is a big weekend of NASCAR. Of course, uh, we got Race Hub coming up. Don't forget, Arca Menards Series is yet to come from mid-Ohio. Race day tomorrow leading us into the Truck Series race under much better conditions. We look forward to it here tomorrow. And then Sunday, race day, get you ready for the cup race at Atlanta. Well, what's your takeaway from what we have seen today in this uh, exercise? Really an exercise in futility, right? <laughs> well, this is nothing like what we're going to see tomorrow. We're going to have a great racetrack, going to be fast speeds. We saw a lot of carnage during that practice session or qualifying session. And NASCAR has said the qualifying session is complete. They just did not elect to do the final round. So they felt like, as you mentioned, Vince, every truck got an opportunity to qualify. They did. It's complete. And there's our front row right there, Adam. I mean, excuse me, Andy. Uh, my takeaway here, obviously, with with, uh, uh, with with our with our truck race rolling around, is I want to be stuck on my couch and don't change the channel from FS1 because this ARCA race is going to be awesome. For Phil Parsons, Andy Lally, I'm Vince Welch. Let's go to Adam Alexander.